What's up guys, Headphones in here, back with another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews, and for this particular review, it's going to be the 2020 film Wonder Woman 1984. So I had a chance to watch it as it is streaming on HBO Max to see if it would be any good, see how it holds up, and see if it's actually a good sequel to his predecessor, Wonder Woman. So a summary of the movie is that Uh, Rewind to the 1980s as Wonder Woman's next big screen adventure finds her facing two all-new foes, Max Lord and the Cheetah. So, basically that's enough of a premise. We go into the film with um, Diana Prince living out her life, obviously missing um, Steve Trevor and all that. And then she comes across a stone at work which... It, which basically grants the person who holds it the wish to do anything they want and in return ask for something um, that it wants. So she, and on her case, she has, at, she's always wishing and hoping that she could have Steve back, so it grants that wish. But then her colleague, um, played by Kristen Wiig, also asked for a life to her life to be the same as Diana's. So, um, she while there's no real um, major reason as to why she what she loses, but um, basically the overarching theme is that the stone eventually causes humans to lose their humanity, to lose their hope and goodness and all of that. And over the course of every of the film, we learn that Max Lord has also been looking for that stone because he wants to have all the dreams and hopes that he's ever wanted. So he ends up getting getting it and ask for it to become the stone himself so he can grant people all the wishes in the world um so overall the disparate themes of the movie worked for me but overall i don't think it really worked it was really portrayed very well so the most intriguing parts of the film were the opening sequence with diana in the race against other amazonian women um the sequence after that where she stops the theft in the mall where they're trying to steal the stone and then the ending sequence with her um using her lasso to project the the truth of humanity and life to get people to renounce all of their wishes and for and with max lord reuniting with his son so overall that all worked but it was kind of it was all the stuff in the middle that really did not work for me and kind of felt like a drag the only real major parts in the film that i did like were um, Max Lord's per, uh, performance by Pedro Pascal in his over the topness, his getting the stone, um, winning over Kristen Wiig's character, and all of that. So that all worked for me. And then uh, Chris Pine as Steve Trevor worked for me, just in his down to earthness, his being thrust into a new timeline. So, like when they're in the museum and he's staring at the trash can, thinking it's art, um, flying the plane and wanting to fly planes and his marveling at that technology and being marveled that they can fly from the U.S. to um, Europe and around the world on one tank of gas. And then the whole thing about flying is just wind and air, the invisible jet and all of that. So all of that worked for me, but the kind of plot lines didn't really work in how it was portrayed. So um, while the Max Lord character story arc was good, I felt that the Um, story arc with his son was kind of it was a good touch but it took away from the rest of the film so um that could have been one of those things where they showed it in a flashback over a few minutes to show that how he was estranged from his wife and son and at the end of the movie show that his son was wanting had the wish for his dad to come back and max lord max lord ends up going after him because he sees the destruction that he caused but instead of having all of that back and forth and kind of to pick up the pace on the film, um, change about around how they handled the research regarding the history of the stone. So instead of having me met the Mayan guy for as far as the history of the stone and what it did, have them have Diana, Kristen Wig, and Steve meet with the Mayan guy first. And because now that Kristen Wiig's character has more of a history on the stone, she ends up going to one of the locations that the, where the stone would complete the transformation, for example, in a Mayan town, and have her transformation be complete there and show that, but then have Diana end up either go back to Themyscira or um, 
have a book or have complete her research on the Amazon history for the God of Lies um, with Steve and then have them plan their course of attack and then have the final battle still be in what whether it's that the US base to tell, commute every to broadcast a signal or have it in the Mayan town and have them have and be a good focal point of energy to transmit um, to anyways with us whether it's a secret base or not I don't that part really didn't bother me but by having it in a Mayan jungle for example they could have um, the, the cheetah be in her element and then Diana using those elements to fight back instead of having a base and uh, and using the power lines and the st- raw stones and all that because the stones would be in a jungle but have the, use the trees as a natural element for the cheetah to um, uh, fight and be uh, more stronger there so um, all that aside I'd probably give the film a grade of about a B minus it was entertaining enough but about halfway through the film it starts to get feel like a drag it doesn't feel like the plot's really going anywhere the movie's not really doing much and it's, it was hard to justify to keep on going but I figured I would finish it and see where it went and um, see if it how it ended and I want to say it did finish strong and it start, like I said it started strong and it finished strong but in the middle it wasn't it felt like a, a rushed piece of work and incomplete there was it feel like there could have been more that they could have done by either waiting a couple of months or uh, redoing some of the storylines a little bit to uh, make the film more interesting and hold up a little bit or hold my attention a little bit more throughout the length of the film so overall I mean that's one of the main reasons why I give it about a grade of a B minus and then having the original Wonder Woman in the mid credit scene was a kind of a nice touch so um I want to say that it sets up a good um, third film to see if she's um, to see if it makes for having her be a villain in the next film or provide her or have her um, show Wonder Woman to or bring Wonder Woman into a much larger universe in the Wonder Woman side of things not necessarily the DC side of things so We'll see what they do with that or to see if that sets up the third Wonder Woman movie. But as far as this film goes, it was okay. If you're a completionist for on the DC side or DC fans, it was entertaining enough. And it doesn't really work well on its own unless you watch the first one. And that's really about it. And because it takes place prior to the Justice League film and the Batman v Superman film, it doesn't really have any tie in there. So um, it kind of sets up that part as far as um, her being tired of humanity but I didn't feel like it was portrayed well enough aside from her closing speech so it's kind of too much to put at the end of the film it feels like it didn't build up enough so um, that's where we are with that Um, so that's all there is for my review and as a bit of side silliness on my part the whole time throughout the movie when they had when they were when they had Wonder Woman in her outfit fighting her boots reminded me way too much of Iron Man, so it was kind of silly there, and I don't know why. Like, it was extra golden red, and it reminded me of the Mark... What was it? Mark 42? Whatever the first Iron Man suit was what he built, that Tony Stark built after getting out of the cave. It reminded me a lot of that suit, so um, just a bit of weird silliness on um, that front. But other than that, the outfit was fine. Um, it's a decent enough film and like I said Max Lord and Steve Trevor were probably they were the highlights of the film the whole Cheetah and Diana Prince parts were okay and they could have been fleshed out a little bit more but as a film overall that's why I give it a grade of about a B minus it's not bad it wasn't great it could have been better but the first Wonder Woman definitely um, was a, a lot better than this one but this one had the potential to be good but was not as good as it could have been so that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, as be- by becoming a Patreon uh, member, you get early access to upcoming content and uh, show notes for headphones, new re- news, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.